Microsoft purchased Skype many years ago, and they incorporated all the features into Microsoft Teams, and then even expanded Teams for our entire organization. On the left-hand side, you can see all the different controls for Teams. First off, we've got activity, then there's chat. It will show any chats that we might have had with various different people. And we've got our calendar of events, just in case we have any type of meetings that are coming up, or we can look at previous meetings as well. And it shows a list of people in my contacts that I can call from Teams, assuming that they have their Teams up and running. If I have any files in my OneDrive, we'll see those here. And I can take any of these files and I can copy them into a Teams chat and share them with the other people in my team. One of the great things about Teams that you won't see in any other application is the apps option. Apps allows us to take a look at all the other apps that we can add in to Microsoft Teams meetings. And they're not just all from Microsoft. You can see from many different third parties. So we add these in, they'll show up on the left-hand side with all the other icons. And then we'll be able to use those applications with Teams. I'm going to add polls, for instance. Click Add. And now I can go ahead and choose which Teams group or channel I'd like to go ahead and add those into. I'll just say it's the general office team. Go ahead and click go. And OK. Now I can click on polls and click open. And go ahead and create a poll. And anybody in this group meeting that's in this team will then be able to see this particular poll. And you can see other apps that might be in your list as well. We've got Planner, OneNote, Visio, and others. We also have Copilot, which is part of Teams. And we can go ahead and make some requests. It's got some examples that we can type in for questions or things we want to see or do. Mostly it's similar to what we can do with Microsoft Word or Excel. It doesn't necessarily create teams for us or anything like that. For that, we would need to go into our admin center. Now, if you're not the admin, you won't see that option, but in this case, I am. So only admins will be able to go in and create additional teams, make changes to users and things like that. So I'm gonna click on Teams. Here are the teams that I already have. I'm just gonna add a team. And I'm going to add this team and call it sales. And it's going to be for the sales team. Now I need to decide who the owner is. And I'll say it's myself. I can add additional ones if I'd like. Now I can add in members. Let's add in Carrie. Click next. Now we need an email address for this team. We'll say sales one. Now, who can be a part of this? Do we want to allow anyone without approval? Or do we want to say only if they're added by an owner? I'm going to say only if added by an owner. If everything looks good, we can click Add Team or we can Edit. And now our team has been created. And after a quick refresh, we now see our sales team. If you decide you no longer want to keep a team, you can certainly go in and just click the three dots and choose to delete. We can edit the email address, name and description, or make changes to the owners or even the people in the team itself. So how does this team meet? Well, what we can do is go over to chat and then at the bottom here, you see sales. I'll click on general. And I can post in the channel if I'd like. Welcome sales team. And I can type a message inside that if I'd like as well. And I'm welcoming the sales team and asking them to take a seat. I can also go into files and then take a file and drag it in, say from my documents or even from OneDrive. And now they have that document that they can share and make changes to. Let's say you're also using OneNote. Well, we can click on Notes and it opens up OneNote. And then we can go ahead and add pages, sections, 
anything we'd like and it'll synchronize with OneNote. And if we don't want to look at this in Teams, we can go ahead and open in a web browser instead. Once again, we can add additional applications by clicking the plus and scrolling through all these applications and it will add it into our team. I'm going to go back to posts and up in the upper right hand corner, you can see the ability to schedule a meeting. So that way, anybody in the team is going to get a message saying, hey, it's time for a meeting or we can just say meet now. I'm going to choose the option to meet now. And that opens up a new box, which I'll maximize. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click join, but I want to make sure that I have all the right sound and everything set up. So here we can see the speakers are the correct speakers. That's exactly what I want. And the microphone is set to the microphone I'd like as well. So I'll choose join now. And now, I am in the call and I need to add some participants. I can either copy the meeting link and send that to the person I'm calling, or I could just click the add participants or just share via email. I'm going to choose to add participants and I'm going to add Carrie into the call. If I don't see her in there, I can just go ahead and type the name there at the top, but she is part of this team's group. So that'll take care of that. And now she's going to go ahead and answer the call and we'll start our call. I'm seeing a request to accept to join the call and click join now. And there's our call. Welcome, Carrie. She's here. Can you hear Thank me? you. Can you hear me okay? Yes, I can. And you can see me all right. Yep, perfectly. All right. Well, go up to the top. Do you see where it has the chat and then you see people. All right, yep. let's go ahead and click on chat and we can send a message to each other. I'll say, hello, Carrie, there you go. So you can see the chat okay? And this will yes, be something that a lot of people, you don't necessarily want to interrupt them, but you want to get that chat message in. And I see your high back, very good. And then if you click on people, you can see the two people in the meeting. If someone wants to raise their hand because they have a question, you can click the raise hand and then you can see the little picture of the hand on the right hand side being raised. So that way, if someone's giving a lecture, they'll know that someone has a question, just like they're raising their hand in class. The majority of the time, the support you'll need to take care of will be because of bad sound or bad picture quality. So I recommend that anyone being on the call be connected to an Ethernet cable rather than being on wirelessly, if at all possible. And I realize that's not always going to be possible. All right. Well, thank you very much, Carrie, for joining our sales meeting. Good luck on your sales and everything else. And we'll go thank ahead and you very click much. leave. Okay. Teams has lots of features and capabilities. Be sure to check out the Admin Center to set up permissions and applications to get the most out of your next Teams call.